Okay, yeah. So this is the the no code IDE. Um, so yeah, that, everything here we have. Yeah, these MDM processes, functions, function examples. Uh, here's where you can sort of manage the entire uh, MDM process uh, uh, from start to finish. So I'll go to MDM processes, and this will pull up the list of processes that we already have. So see, like new customer request, new item request, new vendor request, so on. Um, I will create a new MDM process here and we'll check this out, add it to a project. And what we'll do is we'll call it, uh, yeah, we'll call it hug create vendor. And we'll add that description here just with spaces here. And so now we'll have uh, sort of a blank slate for our process. Uh, so essentially what we want to do here is um, the entire process is going to look like a user will request a new vendor with some very basic information. Uh, this will go to procurement to fill out additional information and then to the AP team to fill out the final um, yeah, payment terms. Uh, and then once they submit, uh, we want this vendor to be created in JDE. Uh, so what we'll do is create a couple of forms here. Uh, yep. So the first form is going to be called create vendor request. I'll save that. It adds the form to our list of forms here. And then our second form is going to be, yeah, vendor details. And you'll sort of see how these uh, come into play here. But uh, the other part that we want is an entity action. And so this is where uh, give the entity action a name. So create vendor. Um, and then we want the entity uh, vendor master and we want to create a vendor master record is what this means. Um, so that's going to be our action is to create a vendor in JDE. And you, you can see from the list, we have, uh, you know, the ability to uh, create items, create address book records and so on. Um, so we have entities for a lot of different things. Uh, but here, yeah, so we have these forms up here. So we have a create vendor request. This is where we want the requester to be able to, um, you know, it, very simply just type out why they need the vendor and what's the vendor's name. Uh, so we can create a group and we'll call it create request. Just like you saw before, this is gonna create, you know, a, a group where we can place fields. Um, and over to the left here is we have our, uh, entity action, you know, this, this create vendor. Um, and so we have some custom fields underneath it. We have, you know, why is this vendor needed? And then we have fields from JDE tables, uh, and their descriptions associated with them. So we have, yeah, address master, um, yeah, we have the, uh, the, the addresses table, and then we have the supplier master as well. Uh, so all we want for this initial request is, you know, why is this vendor needed? And then let me search for alpha name. I'll pull up uh, the alpha name here. I'll place that right over there. And then um, last thing we want to do is just create this why needed. Uh, we can go in and edit the the uh, field. Um, and here we can change it from text box to text area to allow the user to uh, type more in there. Yeah, we can also define things like tips and tool tips, which you saw, uh, default values and so on. We can also edit the description. Uh, we'll go ahead and save that. Okay, yeah, and that's all we want for this first form. So I'll exit out of this form and then we'll go into vendor details. All right, and this form will have a couple of sections. Like I said, we want procurement to fill out some information. So I'll go to the or I'll name one of the group's procurement. And then we want AP to fill out the payment terms. So we'll create a section for them too. Uh, so yeah, here we can just start dragging the, the fields that we need. So we'll add this, why is this vendor needed text box? Once again, we'll change it to a, a text area. Uh, we will bring up the alpha name. Uh, the, oh, sorry, the postal code. 
uh, city. Um, let's see, address line one. A state. Um, and then the last thing, we just need a search type. Okay, and you can see some of these automatically turned into dropdowns, the search type at state. Um, that's because, uh, you know, by the by default, these fields, the available values to enter into these fields are going to be UDC values. Um, and so that's why these are dropdowns and they automatically, you know, take whatever the default UDC is uh, for these fields. Um, and you'll see that once I load up the form. Uh, but the last thing we want is that field in the AP section. Uh, which is uh, payment terms that we're looking for. And that's all APS to fill out. So uh, with that being said, we have our forms created. Uh, last thing we need to do is define a workflow. Um, so, you know, clicking on the workflow icon will pull up the logic for the workflow. And, you know, like I said, it's going to be all drag and drop, low code. Um, so over to the left, we have some options here. We have start, terminate, form, logic, multitask, and create request. Uh, when we're starting out with the new workflow here, we need to start with a create request. So we call it create vendor request. There we go, connected to the start node there. Uh, first thing we wanna do is you know, name the action. So when a user initially requests a vendor, we want them to be able to submit it. So we can add the submit action. Um, actors, like I said, this is where you'll define who can act on these statuses. So uh, we don't need to do that for this example, but uh, that's an, always an option if we need it. Um, and then we have the form icon. So here's where we can select the form that we want the user to see at this create vendor request status. And we want the create vendor request form. Once we do that, we can see uh, some options here. Uh, so at this status, uh, we will want to keep this form expanded and enabled. Um, we don't want to hide it. And then required for submission, uh, we want the user to type in why is this needed and the alpha name for the vendor. OK, so that form's all set up. Uh, next, we want to go to procurement, then AP. Uh, so for those, we can just drag over form. We'll make one for procurement and then we'll also make one for AP. Uh, so once again, we'll want to define the actions they can do. So for procurement, let's say, uh, they can complete, uh, the form, they can save the form, and then they can also reject the request altogether. Yeah, and with these, we can change the color of those branches. We want to uh, do that. So let's change those to green and yellow. Um, yeah, we can also change the position of these. So uh, if it's complete, I'll put it over to the right. Um, and now that we have the, these defined, I can connect these submit to the procurement, save to itself, uh, complete. It will move on to the AP team. And then if we reject, we'll create a rejected kind of terminate status here. Okay, and then uh, same thing, we're gonna go into the form. We're gonna define the form that the user is gonna see at the status of vendor details. Uh, we'll want to expand and enable the procurement section. Uh, and then if they click on complete, we want all of these fields required if they want to complete the form. Uh, we don't wanna do the same for reject and save because we can have them fill out whatever they want in those cases. Uh, and then for the AP section, we can hide it. If this is a procurement user, they shouldn't be able to see that section. So we'll just hide it. Okay, and now we're gonna do a similar thing for AP. So we'll give them the submit action. Actually, we'll call this submit to JDE because this will be going to JDE afterwards. Um, and then the form, it's Self should be vendor details once again. Uh, we have the option if we want to still show the procurement section, we can. Uh, so we'll leave it unhidden 
uh, we want to expand it and we want to enable it. So this AP user should be able to see what was typed there, but they shouldn't be able to um, edit any of the fields. Okay, yeah, and then uh, we want this payment terms field to be required if they want to submit to JDE, so we'll save that. Uh, and then lastly, we'll add, drag a logic status over here, and this will be um, add vendor to JDE. Okay, and then uh, we'll say complete is the action at the status. We'll create a terminate status for that as well. Uh, since this will be a complete completed request. Okay. And not to go into too much, it, uh, but uh, this ad vendor to JDE will uh, use a low code process to or sorry, no code process to um, add the vendor to JDE, which I'll show in a second here, but just refresh this here. Yeah, there we go. Um, so essentially what we have for these functions, uh, so I'm going to use a function to um, to add the, the vendor to JDE. Uh, so we have these list of parameters and there's a document ID uh, which is essentially just the unique ID for the vendor. Um, and we're going to plug that into a function called F0101 to JDE. And we'll just call this create vendor. Uh, we will want to in the UD as this pass parameters back up here. Just... Hug create vendor. And that will load our form so I can, you know, tell them why is this vendor needed. Uh, so I say hug demo and then uh, we'll give an alpha name here and submit. And then once that's submitted, we should see it follow the workflow. And now it's at the procurement status. If you can see from here, this is the workbench. Uh, so uh, normally we would assign this to procurement users, but um, just, yeah, just for the sake of time, I'm going to use this uh, same admin user to approve this request. But when I scroll down, all we can see is the procurement section, not the AP section, which is uh, correct for the status. So we just type in the information here. Uh, Illinois, and then search type. This is coming from UDC. Like I said, the state and search type is coming from UDC by default. So I'll pick on uh, suppliers and then complete. And then according to the workflow, if we complete, this should go to AP. Just to fill out the payment terms. Of... And then uh, from there, it should just go into JDE. So that request is completed. Now it's at the AP status. Yeah, and you can see we have that procurement section closed. Um, yeah, we can expand it if we need to. Uh, and then we can just plug in the payment terms and submit to JDE. Yep, so if we just give this a second, it should uh, go into JDE. And then uh, let me just pull up the, oh, this is the item master. So let me pull up address book revisions. Yep, and we can see this uh, vendor was created. Um, and clicking into it, we should be able to see those few fields that we had filled out there. Uh, yeah, like address here. Um, and yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, full sort of MDM process uh, created from scratch there.